And welcome back to Leading Edge. Good to have you along. State Representative Lisa Sibaki was with us several weeks ago, a few months ago, actually, back in the spring. But she reached out to me recently suggesting that we need to get word out regarding unemployment in Ohio. Now, you know, by now, we've talked about it on the show, Ohio's outdated unemployment system was overwhelmed by the pandemic going back to 2020. That caused massive delays in getting unemployment benefits into the hands of people who really needed those benefits. It also opened the door to fraudsters who slimed their way to receiving payments they had no business getting. But something called the Unemployment Modernization and Improvement Council has been investigating what went wrong and what to do about it. State Representative Lisa Sebecki is part of that organization, that council. So um, what are you hearing and about what we're, where we are and what we're going to do about it? Well, Jerry, uh, first of all, thank you Good for the you. opportunity to, to come out here today and uh, talk about this very important issue. And um, I've been sitting on the council since February, and we just currently had our report draft report that came out mm -hmm. about what we discovered through uh, numerous meetings that we had. And yes, we talked about the fraud that was taking place, what measures we need to, you know, the, the state needs to implement. And we also heard from constituents across the state about their experience of being um, on unemployment or not being able to get their unemployment benefits. And it was very troublesome to me that we had uh, people from this area that came down to Columbus to talk about how long it took them to get their unemployment and then their unemployment benefits were one day would be this amount, another day be that amount, and then they would be struck with an overpayment and they had provided all the documentation that was asked of them. And so we put together this report and have issued it, but through House Bill 614, we are still um, going to be meeting because our work is still not done because we have not had the performance audit that the Secretary of State's office has been doing, or excuse me, the auditor's office has been doing to present to us, and that will be in September. Now, some people got more unemployment compensation that maybe than they were due, but not through any fraudulent action on their part. I understand you're telling me that government, and you can tell me who this is, now wants that money back, or maybe has been taking that money back and, and putting people in a predicament you're telling me there is a way out, there is assistance for them. Explain this waiver to me and our viewers, Lisa Sebecki. Well, uh, yes, um, President Biden had said when he came into office, um, he allowed for states to be able to adopt a waiver process. And the state of Ohio did this and we were awarded the waiver process on May the 6th. And um, so this, the Department of Jobs and Family Services Put together a process that people can that can apply for this waiver um, in your traditional unemployment or the pandemic unemployment side, uh, and you can apply for this waiver if you a, a couple of things have to happen. You had a hardship, and or your case was adjudicated improperly. So what you need to do is go on to the state's um, unemployment system and uh, apply for the waiver. People that are on the um, PUA, the pandemic unemployment, this is our gig workers, our restaurant workers, our waiters, our waitresses, uh, for examples, um, they should have received an email and a letter in the mail. This is something I advocated for down in the state house because not everybody's stuck to their emails. Uh -huh. And so they would notif be notified that there's this waiver process. And Jerry, as of August the 5th, and this is why I want to sound the alarm bells and I called you to allow me to come on and talk about this is because there's 18% of Ohioans have only in the traditional, your traditional state unemployment have applied for the overpayment waiver. In the pandemic unemployment um, area, there's only been 13.3% have requested the waiver. So a lot so of people out there received money uh, that they can get the, the, the payback can get waived. Um, folks, put these initials together and then I'll give you the words ODJFS. Okay. You say, what is that? Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. Okay. Their unemployment um, at, at their website, their tab there, there will be, Lisa Sebecki tells me, a tab that you can click on there if you have not received the emails. And she says many people are telling her they have not. 
you should do it now. And as she's telling us, uh, uh, that would apply to a whole bunch of you. If those percentage figures of people who have executed so far, uh, those are pretty, pretty small. So good information to get out there, folks. I'm going to go ahead and ask Lisa Subit, if people got more benefits than they were due, why shouldn't they pay back the excess? Well, Ohioans have spent that money and they turned around and put that money back into the economy. They were paying their rent, they were paying for their mortgage, they were paying for their um, utilities, et cetera. And they were told that this is the amount of money that you were to receive. They were under the belief that this is the money that they, that they um, were, that they were um, processed correctly for. Right. What we found was that because the money was shoved out so fast and furious to get into people's pockets, which I'm glad they did, but people's cases were not adjudicated, were not calculated correctly. Yeah, and they've spent now the money. I mean, these are the experts. These, these are the agencies that were supposed to know what they were doing. I guess if I got that check in the mail and I was told it was due me because of the hardship I was under because of the pandemic, I probably would have gone and spent it, would have gone and spent it too. All right, so folks, if that's you, the waiver is out there. Execute that. You'll sleep better at night. You won't have to pay the money back. Okay. Hey, while I've got you here, Lisa Beck, a couple other things. You were part of a legislative contingent um, that midweek went public with your concerns about redrawing Ohio legislative districts, something we've talked about on my show. As reported in the Blade recently, no big change is expected locally in our area anyway, because the Dems are concentrated in Toledo, their majorities, and the surrounding North Mr. High counties is faced at our bright red Republican. And I, I think that's true, isn't it? And isn't that so, the scenario that will play out really across the state? Your blue pockets, Cleveland, from Columbus, some Toledo, maybe some Cincy and Dayton. And then the rest is and maybe some Athens County. Then the rest of the state is red. I don't know how we get, I don't know how you guys improve the number of districts you have. Am I missing something? Well, Jerry, you know, we, we passed a constitutional, constitutional amendment um, a number of years ago, not once, but twice. And Ohioans said they wanted fair districts right. and fair representation. And so we're just now getting those census numbers in and looking at that data. So really to be able to, to be fair to your viewers today is we don't know yeah. and uh, what exactly these are going to look like. Some can assume but um, assumptions kind of get us into bad areas. I think we need to work off facts, but something that we need to, and as those numbers are coming out, uh, we need to apply those into the way the constitution was written. And that's that, that Ohioans overwhelmingly said, we want fair districts, fair representation and a fair voice. And, um, and it shouldn't be that you have a pocket of folks that are pushing their their personal agendas versus the agendas that we've heard from Ohioans. And what we've heard from Ohioans is they want fair funding for their schools. We've heard Ohioans that they say they want uh, voter access. We've heard from Ohioans that they want their voice to be heard, not personal agendas. So there's an opportunity uh, right here in um, Northwest Ohio on next Thursday right here in our backyard at the University of Toledo on August the 26th at 2.30 to 4.30 is an opportunity for the public to be able to attend a public hearing on how to draw fair maps. And again, at least you should pointing out, we did as voters in Ohio back in 2015, and again in 2018 said, this is not right where we are. Uh, we, we know that one party does not represent um, that, that over two thirds of Ohioans are one party. And yet, if you look at our state government, that is the case where they have super majorities on one side. So it's not really reflective of the makeup, the broad makeup of the state of Ohio. We're really short on time. We had a local school superintendent on our show earlier expressing her frustration that more people aren't getting vaccinated for COVID-19 as we head into the school year. Should the state step up requirements for things like ma mask wearing, and frankly, could the governor do that anyway, since your fellow lawmakers stripped him of much pandemic authority, seemingly putting themselves in the power position? Well, Jerry, it's unfortunate. Um, and this is what happens. We have a super majority town the go. state house. Yep. Is we're not um, actually following what science says. And science says is that if you're vaccinated, you have a lower risk of giving getting the COVID 
and you have a lower risk of being hospitalized. Yeah. Unfortunately, right now, the focus of this variance is on those that are not vaccinated and on those that don't have the opportunity to get a vaccine vaccine yet. And that's our kids that are 12 and younger. So um, I, mean, I follow the science, I'm wearing my mask and I, you know, I support school districts um, having the opportunity, having making that a requirement of wearing masks. Schools should have, okay, mask mandates. All right, we're going to leave it right there. It's always, she's always right there with, with what's going on in the state of Ohio. Mr. Savecki, uh, best to you. Thanks for, for checking us out. And thanks for getting that word out to the folks out there who maybe are, are really flummoxed about what, what I, they're telling me I have to write them a check. I owe them money. No, 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 folks. ODJFS, Ohio Department of Job Family Services. Go to their site, find the tab, get your waiver. Lisa Sebecki, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Jerry. Pleasure, and I'll be right back.